Hello everybody and welcome to an extremely sciencey episode of the Geek Street Journal, the show that tells you about interesting, nerdy, and scientific dates coming up in the week ahead. March 14th is Pi Day as well as Einstein's birthday. Pi is a mathematical constant. What is a mathematical constant you might be asking yourself? Well, it's a number that's constant. It doesn't change. It can be inserted into an equation to give you a good baseline and numbers to work all of your other algebra. I don't, I'm, I'm not good at math. I wrote a song about how much I hate math. Link in the dungeon. Yeah, it will wear off eventually. I will get tired of saying dungeon. But today is not that day. Lord of the Rings, you know, jab in there for you. And for some reason, this mathematical sign, this one right here, has gained a large following. Now, gen pi is generally used for calculating circumference and radii and area in spheres and circles and cylinders. Pi is actually a huge number, an infinite number in fact. At the time of me saying this, there are three trillion calculated digits of pi. And for this reason, they will test supercomputers by seeing, you know, by seeing how accurate they are, by seeing if they match the three trillion numbers of pi we already have. Now, I can't say all three trillion digits, but what I can give you are the first eight. Ready? 3.141592653529. Woo! Yay. Now, do you get why it's March 14th? 3.14, 3 third month, 14th day. Yeah, uh, nerds get pretty bored, and um, we have to find some way to entertain ourselves, right? Speaking of entertaining ourselves, what else is on March 14th? That would be Einstein's birthday. Einstein Day. Wahoo! I've been waiting for this one. Now, in case you guys don't know, this is my rendering of Einstein, who's actually a pretty smart guy. You know, a total Ravenclaw, if you get my drift. He helped uh, come up with the ideas of space-time and helped refine the idea of relativity and special relativity. And of course, as most people know him... <coughs> oh, that tastes awful. Don't ever, like, eat the end of a pen. Uh, he came up with E equals m c squared. Ta-da! Which basically states you can take a teeny little atom like this one. What's it going to be? One electron, so that's hydrogen. Yay! I know that because of chemistry. Uh, and you can, from this, get enough energy to do this. That's not a tree, by the way. That's a very destructive mushroom cloud of doom. Not Good. Got it? Now I'd love to take the time to explain to you how this and this equals this, but I could never do it as well as uh, Minute Physics. So down to the dungeon this week you will find a series of videos done by Minute Physics um, to celebrate last year's Einstein Day and it talks about a lot of his ideas and theories and it does like relativity in a great way. Also in the description you will find a Stanford University video uh, explaining relativity over like an hour long lecture. Did you guys know that? A lot of universities have YouTube channels and they put up lectures. If you want to learn like the actual lesson, you can you know watch these uh, lectures, which I just love watching. University of Nottingham has some great videos. Now March 15th is act happy by some days count, but not me. I'd rather celebrate it as you know, the holiday. I prefer to celebrate on it. Brutus Day. Now, as some of you may know, who are history buffs or literary buffs. I might have given it away with my uh, prop dagger. It is a prop, by the way. Don't worry, I'm not gonna... Oh. Um, Brutus is the man who plotted and possibly killed Julius Caesar as immortalized in the Shakespeare play... Get this, ready? Julius Caesar. The dully and yet accurately named play by the great uh, English playwright. I would take this week in general just to look over the play, Julius Caesar. It's a very good read and an even better watch. As remember, all of Shakespeare's works were made to be seen and performed, not just uh, read. I saw Romeo and Juliet, and I did not get the wit of Marcuccio until I saw him in action in the Greensboro Playhouse. It was fantastic. What's that? You don't... You don't, you don't have the ability to see Julius Caesar where you are. If you wanted, I, I, I could say some of the lines. I could do a reading of Julius Caesar. What's that? My Renfair garb is already laid out for me? Ready? <coughs> huh. Renfair garb? Gauntlet? I'm missing one. Sack of 
walnuts and uh, a spiffy belt. Indeed, it appears I have, in fact, warped into my Renaissance character. No, oh, just close, but in fact, the accent is upon me. Ah, uh, let us get started quoting. Cowards die many times before their death. The valiant never taste death but once. Of all the wonders that I have yet heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear seeing that death the necessary end will come when it will come. Men at sometimes are masters of their fate. The fault de Brutus is not in our stars but in ourselves, that we are underlings. John Green, are you crashing my Shakespeare reading? I thought so. That's right. You made me cry. Twice. And as he plucked his cursed steel away, mark how the blood of Caesar followed it, as rushing out of doors to be resolved if Brutus kindly knocked or no. And that is this episode of Geek Street Journal. Thank you very much for watching. I'm probably not going to get out of this spiffy thing anytime soon. I'm going to go parade around the house spewing Shakespeare out of my lips. Goodbye. See you all next week. Have a great week.